you're not gonna wanna miss today's video because I'm gonna be sharing five tips or hacks that you'll definitely wanna implement in your kitchen. These are super simple to do, yet they'll have a big and lasting impact. You'll also wanna make sure that you watch till the end of this video because I'm gonna be saving my best tip for last. Welcome to Tiny and Tidy, which is where you'll always find useful and practical content that will motivate you to simplify and organize your life. I'm Vishali and I am so excited to share some of my favorite kitchen tips with you today. In fact, I'm always sharing useful tips on Instagram and Facebook, so if you're not already following me, there's my handle. Make sure that you start following me so that you don't miss out. You'll also want to check out my blog at www.tinyandtidy.com co for even more content full of tips to help you make the most of your time declutter and get organized all right let's get into tip number one a drying mat so when I lived with my parents and also when I first moved out, I always used a dish rack to dry my dishes. If you live in a larger home and have a double sink or a fairly large counter, then it isn't that big a deal having a dish rack. But I've been living in a small space for many years and I've had to get rid of non-essential items to make my small space less cluttered. Well, something I realized I could do without is a dish rack. These things take up quite a bit of space and they're not the most attractive to look at. So what you can do instead is buy a drying mat. I'll link the one that I have in the description box down below. These are great because they give you a space to dry your dishes, but once your dishes are dry, you can easily hang them on your cabinet handle or place a command hook on the inside of a cabinet and hang it there. You then have a clear countertop and no longer have to house a large dish rack. It's also much easier to clean a drying mat than a dish rack. Simply throw it in the washer and dryer and you're good to go. I replaced my dish rack with a drying mat years ago and haven't missed it once. Tip number two, invest in e-cloths or Norwex. If you're not already familiar with e-cloths or Norwex, I'll just give you a quick explanation of what they are. They're basically these magical microfiber cloths that will make your kitchen counters and appliances sparkle without the use of any chemicals. All you need is the cloth and water and you're good to go. I have both e-cloths and Norwex and will eventually do a review and compare the two. But for now, I highly recommend that you do some research and give one of them a try. Both brands are awesome and you truly can't go wrong if you decide to invest in these. Apparently they kill 99% of bacteria, but again, I'm no expert on the science behind these, so do your research. All I know is that I no longer use toxic chemicals when cleaning and my kitchen looks and feels cleaner than ever. So look into it and also subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I post my honest review of Norwex versus eCloths. All right, let's move on to tip number three, decanting. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm all about decanting anything and everything. It's incredibly space saving and looks a million times better than leaving everything in its original packaging. It might be an extra step, but I think it's totally worth the effort and makes the biggest difference. I have a ton of items decanted in my pantry, fridge, and freezer. If you want to know more about my fridge and how it's organized, make sure to check out this video. I also recommend that you check out this one to see how I've organized my freezer. I'm often asked about expiry dates when decanting. Most of our items I know will finish before it expires, so I don't bother writing down the expiry dates. But if it's something that we don't consume regularly and I'm worried about it expiring, I will write the expiry date on a piece of masking tape and stick it on the bottom of the container. As for containers for decanting, I like to use OXO pop containers. I talked about these containers in this video, so watch that one if you want to know more. I like using custom vinyl labels. I'll link all of these items and the machine for labeling in the description box down below. And over on my website, I also have a shop where I've linked all of my favorite products and you'll be able to find these things linked there as well. I hope that you're finding this video useful and if you are and would like to see more videos like this one, please comment down below with the word more. Okay, so now on to tip number four, soaking utensils. 
For this tip, you'll need to get some kind of jar or container. I just use a wide mouth mason jar. I then put in some dish soap and filled it with some water. I leave this jar in the sink. Whenever we have dirty utensils, we simply place them in the jar. This works great for two reasons. Number one, it makes it easier to clean your utensils. Whether you're using a dishwasher or hand washing your dishes, by allowing your utensils to soak for hours in the jar, it helps any food that may have stuck on your utensils to easily come off. No more scrubbing or having to rewash utensils from the dishwasher. Soaking them will make them a lot easier to clean. The second reason I like having this jar in the sink is because it keeps all of my utensils together and makes it easier when loading the dishwasher. I can easily grab all of the cutlery at once and I'm not digging through all of the dishes to find them. And now for my final tip, which is also one of my favorites, the blueberry container. I've shared this tip on Instagram, but thought it was worth mentioning again for anyone that may have missed it. But again, I remind you to follow me over there if you're not already following so that you don't ever miss another useful tip. So a while ago, we purchased some blueberries from the grocery store and they came in a container that was different from the containers that we typically get our blueberries in. This one was a cute little basket and once I prepped my berries, I didn't want to toss it. Which reminds me, if you want to know how I prep my berries so that they'll last up to two weeks, make sure to check out my blog and I'll also link my berry prep post in the description box down below. Anyways, as I was saying, I really didn't want to toss the cute container, but I don't like just keeping things if they're not adding value, and I wanted to find a purpose for this container. So that was when I came up with a brilliant idea that's been working so well for us. I got a zip tie, and I attached a blueberry container to the top rack of my dishwasher. That is where we now store our dish sponge and J-cloth. That way, my sponge and cloth are always kept out of sight, and more importantly, they get cleaned every time we run the dishwasher. I no longer have a stinky J-cloth, and I can use it until it's completely falling apart, whereas before, I toss them because they'd start to smell. So those are five tips that you can easily implement in your kitchen that will help make things more organized, clean, and tidy. If you'd like to to know all of my secrets, make sure to sign up for my Clear the Clutter membership. That's where I teach people how to declutter, organize, and clean their homes step by step. Once we've fully decluttered and organized the entire home, I'll then teach you the systems that I've implemented in order to easily maintain a clean and organized home. I'll also get into meal planning and meal prep and explain how I manage all of that for our family of five. You can find out more about Clear the Clutter on my website or by clicking on the link in the description box down below. If you like this video, please hit that like button so that I'll know that you want to see more videos like this one and share this video with someone that you know will find it useful. As always, thanks for watching guys and happy tidying. Bye!